Were you a fan of Chris Brown back in his teen R&B sensation days? I'm talking about before all of the misconduct, when he was on the cover of every teen magazine. The days when he released DVDs and was on MTV's My Super Sweet 16. If so, you probably remember his protégés Scooter and Miles. For two years, they served as his background dancers and sidekicks, frequently accompanying him for music videos, interviews, and performances. Chris's fans adored the young dancers and were curious about who they were. Were they his nephews, cousins, or brothers? One of them even ended up being Chris's first artist on his label. But it seems like one day, they both just disappeared. And that's not exactly the case. This is what happened to Scooter Smith and Miles Brown. My two protégés, um, Miles and Scooter. I mean, these are my little homies right here. They the little homies. They, this, this Scooter. Uh huh. This Miles. Scooter's my artist on Interscope. You know what I'm saying? Even my homeboys, Miles and Scooter. Y'all check them out coming on Nickelodeon soon. So here they go. But uh. Miles Brown was born in Los Angeles, California in 1999, where he was raised his entire life. He started training at the Debbie Allen Dance Academy when he was only five years old and started booking entertainment gigs. Sometime in either 2005 or 2006, Miles attended a Chris Brown concert and met the singer backstage during a meet and greet. Chris was the biggest rising R&B teen star at the time, and his debut album produced four top 20 hits, including his number one debut single, Run It. The album also earned him two Grammy nominations. Miles danced for Chris backstage, and he was impressed. So he took Miles on tour as a background dancer. Jermaine Scooter Smith was born and raised in Baltimore, Maryland on December 6, 1995. As a young child, he enjoyed rapping along to artists like DMX, Lil Romeo, and Bow Wow. So at age five, his mother placed him and his older sister in a McDonald's talent show, then traveled to New York to perform at a showcase at Showtime at the Apollo, where they came in second place. Where are you guys from? Where are you from? Baltimore. Baltimore. In the house, give it up for Baltimore. <laughs> All right. What y'all gonna do for us tonight, man? We gonna sing. What y'all gonna sing? Lil' Romeo. Lil' Romeo. Y'all give them a round of applause, y'all. Let's say and Jermaine. Scooter caught the attention of Jay Boog of B2K, who flew him out to Los Angeles to begin recording music. Jay persuaded the family to move to Los Angeles so that he could take Scooter under his wing, and they finally decided to relocate to Southern California a few years later. Scooter was also a very good dancer, so he was eventually enrolled in Debbie Allen's Dance Academy where he met Miles. Both boys began performing at different local showcases of their own, and at some point, they joined Tommy the Clown's Crump Focus dance crew. In January 2007, Chris made his film debut in Stump the Yard, a drama film centering fraternities and stepping competitions. With a Grammy performance set for the following month, Chris decided to do a fraternity step team themed performance to promote the film. He incorporated Miles in the choreography, but decided he needed a second child dancer to accompany him. So Miles introduced Chris to Scooter, and he landed the gig without auditioning. And this was the start of a dynamic trio. Scooter and Miles started popping up everywhere with Chris Brown. They did many performances and accompanied him for talk show appearances.
Miles and Scooter starred in the music videos for Wall to Wall and his hit song Kiss Kiss off the sophomore album titled Exclusive. Ain't been in here 15 minutes, got a pocket full of digits and she just won't take none. Girl, I actually put that pin down. My two little homies in the video. The one with the cornrows and the one with the short hair. The one with the short hair, my little homie, his name is Miles. He's one of the, the, the best dancers as far as the, the, the young guy. He's only like nine, eight or nine. He's really, really in tune with his dancing skills. Um, my other little homie is actually my artist that signed to Interscope and my label CBE. He's actually a rapper, but he can dance. He really gets off. His name is Scooter, so that's how we doing it. We bringing the CBE camp. Cause after a while, when I'm like 50 years old, I ain't gonna be dancing, they gonna be dancing. So you know what I'm saying? I gotta put them in the spotlight early, let them have their shine and have fun. My two protégés, um, Miles and Scooter. Scooter's actually signed to my label as far as an artist. He's signed to CBE slash Interscope. You gonna see him soon. Everybody say he look like me when he dance, cause he, you know what I'm saying? We always practice together. As well as Miles. Miles is one of the, the little Cassie skateboards, scooter skateboards too, but you know what I'm saying? They're regular young boys, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, they dance and they love to entertain and show people their talents. They look like little grown men dancing and stuff, being in the crew with us, the only young guys. Like, it's, it, I had to bring that back. So, Miles and Scooter, my little homies, all day. Chris soon found out that Scooter was an aspiring rapper when he visited his MySpace page and saw a video of him freestyling. That was the same year the R&B singer founded his record label, CBE, which stands for Chris Brown Entertainment or Culture Beyond Evolution under Interscope Records. And Scooter became his first artist on the label. One day, the CBE team checked Scooter out of school early to meet Interscope music executive Jimmy Iovine, and Scooter landed a major deal on the spot. The R&B superstar immediately began working closely with him and help develop his sound and record music. When I first met Scooter, I saw just the, the drive in him. And he, he's a great, great kid, man. Heck, my little brother. What's up, what's happening? This is what songs are going to tell me. Now I'm nerd right here. Y'all! The boys joined Chris on his UCP exclusive tour starting in late 2007 into early 2008. Both Miles and Scooter had their own featured segments where Miles showed off his dance skills and Scooter performed unreleased music. They also performed together on opposite ends of the stage. Look at this right here, look at this. Hello, it's your boy Miles Brown, and I'm Maya J, and I'm from LA. When I first started, I didn't really know how to do all the flips, but I know how to stand on my hand and all that. But then he told me how to break dance. Well, actually, he didn't. Chris didn't touch. Um, hmm. This is where I see myself in 20 years. Chris gonna be my backup then. Voulez-vous bouger avec moi? Make some noise for Miles, y'all. Y'all seen him in this Chris Chick video right here. Y'all seen him in Chris Brown's video. Let's go, Miles. My name is Scooter, I'm from Baltimore, Maryland, and I'm 11 years old. Chris wanted me to do on the 2007-49th annual Grammys. So, I was like, do you want to do it? I was like, yes. Ever since then, I was just been a dancer with Chris. On tour, we're going to be doing business, but on my bus, we're not going to be doing business. We're going to be having fun. Miles and Scooter quickly gained popularity from working so closely with Chris Brown and appearing in behind the scenes clips. I'm Scooter. And I'm Miles. And we like, we like the Chris Brown's brothers. Brothers. Kids, don't let your big brother do that. If you see somebody do that, just kick him. Just kick him in the. What the? Oh, the videos. Let's bring it back. Come on, 
Let's go back to water wall. Now, right, water wall. wall. When we did the video, we had a lot of fun. That was that was kind of freaky though. Vampire girls was crazy. Like, they had big teeth. Yeah, they like, like oh, they, they, they teeth was bigger than mine. They should do that on Halloween, huh? I mean, these my little homies right here. They little homies. They, this, this scooter. Uh huh. This Miles Scooter's my artist on Interscope and, and my label CBE, but Miles, the little homie that's been rocking with me since he was six years old. You know what I'm saying? He nine now. Look at, him, man. Look at him. Little man shining right. on him. <laughs> so, but, they, so these you know, are these are dancers. They, they part of the Breakfast Club too. The BC all day, but you know what I'm saying? They, they do their thing. They they rap everything. The whole nine yards spitting. Give him the mic, Chris. Give him the mic, Chris. Yeah. You ready? Come on. You're on 106 baby. Do your You're thing. You're on 106 Wait, wait, wait. Do give, him, right. give, him, give him the beat. You right, gotta let's give him get the it, beat. Let's get it. I got a PlayStation 3 in the Xbox 360. Oh. Cartoons on the plasma. You can see clearly. I put the toys down just so I can. Also in late 2007, it was reported by The Hollywood Reporter that Nickelodeon had teamed up with Chris Brown to create a pilot based around the two backup dancers. The teen R&B superstar was slated to executive produce a half-hour sitcom revolving around 11-year-old Scooter and 9-year-old Miles as they tour with him. Chris's manager, Tina Davis, also signed on to executive produce the untitled project. I just want to give a couple of quick shout outs, you know what I'm saying? All the job staff, everybody at Nickelodeon, you know what I'm saying? Even my homeboys, Miles and Scooter, y'all check them out coming on Nickelodeon soon, so here they go. But, uh... Meanwhile, Scooter was getting into acting. He made small appearances on Just Jordan, the Lost television series, and Gardens of the Night, starring Michelle Rodriguez. And by the end of the year, Chris was ready to start the rollout of Scooter's music. Hip hop artist Problem was hired on as a ghostwriter for Scooter before gaining success as a rapper. The first song written by him became Scooter's debut single, Head of My Class, featuring Chris. The aspiring rapper did many showcases to promote the single and even appeared in Word Up magazine with Chris. Unfortunately, they weren't able to generate enough buzz for the single, so it didn't see any commercial success. But Scooter still teased his upcoming album and was said to be working with Swiss Beats, Polo Da Don, T-Pain, and Mario for the record. Swiss made the beat that knock for me. Doing a real major Swiss beats. Doing a real major the next generation right here. Never be too cool to work with work with, you know, up and coming. All these producers they get big heads and stuff like that. Oh no. Listen, that's the next generation of showtime. Swiss beats holla at me. When can we expect the album to come out? Of uh, February. I think it might come out February. I'm not sure yet. Just mm -hmm. you know, first of February, so you know what I'm saying? So yeah. So, um, besides them and besides Chris Brown, who else do you have in your record? Do you have any other features? Um, yes, I do. I have, I have T Pain. You no, know, that's my single. Um, I have a, I have Mario, a song called Favorite Girl. I have a, a, a kid from the Handheld Kids, I believe they're called. So, he, he's on one of my songs called Do It For Me. You know, it's a collaboration with me and him. So, you know, it's real crazy. You know, we write me and Ludacris. Ludacris wrote that song, and, you know, we just write our lyrics, you know. Oh, very nice. That's a, an, an impressive roster you got there. However, the project was never released, and the pilot for Scooter and Miles' untitled Nickelodeon show never aired. No word on whether or not they even shot it. Chris's legal troubles that followed in February 2009 tainted his career and nobody wanted to be associated with him or anyone affiliated with him, which is probably why Scooter and Miles' careers and projects had to suffer. What's, what's, the, what's the little dude's name you had back in the day? You Scooter. 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 What happened Scooter. with me with Scooter, man, it was, uh, we, were, we were all set to go, got the album ready, and you know, the, uh, the Rihanna incident happened. Mm -hmm. So, everything kind of went away because I couldn't be the face to put him out there. Right. You know, so I just told him, I said, man, go back to school, get your education, and I gave him some money. By mid-2009, Miles Brown had become well-known in the jerkin' street dance scene through his affiliation with the Rangers and New Boys. 
He popped up in a lot of dancing videos on YouTube. He also started recording music around this time and had a small dancing role in an episode of Disney's Shake It Up. Swagging on another level, jerk one, jerk two, bitch, you better on your level. He even started dancing with Justin Bieber, who was trying to get into the jerking craze. He went on to work with the likes of Madonna and Red Hot Chili Peppers. Meanwhile, Scooter was still trying to push his own music forward. In late 2009, he released a remix to Soldier Boy's Kiss Me Through the Phone featuring Jasmine V. But he was eventually released from Interscope, raining on his dreams of ever becoming a mainstream artist. He also tried to join the Jerkin scene, but his presence wasn't as prominent. So Scooter decided to focus on school and played football for some time. Miles, on the other hand, was finding success outside of dancing. He landed a small role in the 2011 comedy film Hopelessly in June, released a single featuring Sage the Gemini, and would soon become affiliated with another music act. In 2012, he took on a career as a full-time DJ for Mindless Behavior. He had already known three of the members from his neighborhood and the Debbie Allen Dance Academy. His job every night on their tour was to hype up the crowd and spin records recorded by the boys. Miles even frequently appeared in their Awesomeness TV web series and was featured in their film documentary, Mindless Behavior All Around the World. Yo, what up, uh, my name is Miles, aka DJ Big Deal, Mindless Behavior DJ. My job was really to hype the crowd up. I came here to party tonight. Did y'all come here to party with Mindless Behavior? I said, did you come in and party with Mindless Behavior? Make sure they're having a great time at the concert and uh, just have a lot of fun. We're looking for our number one girl. His affiliation with the group helped him build a fan base. Miles was still in contact with Chris around this time and was spotted in paparazzi pics with the singer from time to time. Scooter was also seen with Chris a few times over the years and even made an appearance in his Holla At Me music video. But there were no real signs of either of them working with him professionally again like they did years prior. Chris had pretty much moved on and signed other talent to his label. So Miles and Scooter finished out high school and started living regular lives. Miles created a streetwear line at the age of 12 named 7-Eleven Pack, which stands for Peep a Cool Kid. He says, Never put yourself in a box. Do what makes you happy instead of pleasing others. Life is all about having balance. So we are young entrepreneurs inspiring kids around the globe to be who they want without fear of judgment. End quote. Reflecting on his time as Chris's protege, Scooter wrote on Instagram, Overall, before it ends, just wanted to say I'm thankful for this man right here, my big brother. No matter what, man, we cannot talk for days, months, years. Nothing will change what you've done for me. You gave me a platform and an opportunity most people my age dream to have. It's crazy how people make you out to be some selfish animal with a quick temper. But the person I know is a 17-year-old who gave this kid a chance to become everything that he's dreamed of. Thank you for everything along with Tina. Regardless, big bro, I love you, man, no matter the distance. End quote. They want to know the truth, well let me explain I'm gonna start from the beginning, way back in the days When I was young, had the beads on all of my braids Me and Miles ripping us up in every way First show I did the Grammys, felt love Knew I was now part of a family The ending of rehearsals, we said we was all we got Why did it have to change, why you had to change the plot Do anything for your little bro, what's your motive But it seems you couldn't control it Had you got older, I had a dream both Miles and Scooter have released new music in recent years, but like I said, they seem to be living pretty normal lives now. Do you guys remember the Chris Brown, Miles and Scooter era? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, like this video, and subscribe to BFTV for more content.